Did the Ottawa Senators make the right call selecting Brady Kachuk over Philip Sedino at fourth overall? And how was the rest of their draft? Was it a lot of reaches or a lot of safe picks? Let's talk about it next. Welcome back to Hockey Scouting Report. So glad you're here. So glad you're watching. Today's video, we're going to look at the fourth franchise in the 2018 NHL Entry Draft to see who they drafted and how it went for them. We just recently looked at the Buffalo Sabres, Carolina Hurricanes, and most recently the Montreal Canadiens. We're going to be going through every single team within the next week or so, possibly two weeks. And so today we look at the Ottawa Senators, who at fourth overall, they take Brady Kachuk, one of the most intriguing prospects of the entire draft. Someone who, on some mock drafts, went as high as third Others went as low as ninth. So very interesting to see he goes as high as fourth. A lot of Ottawa Senators fans are really hoping for Philip Sedina. So it makes it an interesting pick for them, for him to go at fourth. So we'll talk about that in a second, as well as the rest of their entire draft. How did the rest of the draft go? Did they make a lot of reaches or safe picks? But first, if you're new to the channel, I'm so glad you're here. I have a lot of content on prospects especially this most recent draft, a lot of scouting reports for the first 50 or 60 or so prospects. I also have some comparison videos, some deep looks at prospect pools. The most interesting comparison videos that I have right now, I have uh, Zadina versus Svechnikov, Kachuk versus uh, Wallstrom, interesting videos like that, also Hughes versus Boquist, as well as uh, Nico Heischer versus Nolan Patrick a year later. So some interesting comparison videos. I will be having a few coming out within the next week or two as well as some other interesting videos. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, feel free to subscribe for more content. When we get closer to September, we'll be going into the 2019 NHL Entry Draft and looking at all the prospects that way. So there's a lot of great content here for prospects if that's something you're interested in. Or if you know someone who might be interested in this, feel free to share that content with them. So let's get right into the video. And lastly, check out my Twitter. It's at HockeyLevine using the hashtag HockeyLevineTalk. Feel free to engage with me there on any uh, suggested videos or if you want to talk about a certain prospect. I also put up polls there from time to time about what video you might find most intriguing to do next or thoughts on a certain trade, whatever it is. I'll have those there. And then, of course, I always link the newest video as soon as it is posted on Twitter so you can get the fastest notifications possible for the videos. So let's get right into the content. And if you enjoy this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up and, of course, subscribe for more content. And feel free to comment below your thoughts. So Brady Kachuk goes off the board at fourth. Left winger, the best left winger of the draft, 6'3", 192. He was also just within uh, hours of being in last year's 2017 NHL draft. So Brady Kachuk is highly developed for being drafted already. That's why he potentially could be a NHL starting player, top six role player for Ottawa in the fall. In theory, he could go back to Boston University, do a season there, and then come to the NHL. But it's looking more like he's going to go to the NHL directly. And Brady Kachuk, this year, in Boston University, 40 games played, 8 goals, 23 assists, 31 points, 61 penalty minutes, and a plus 15. The numbers aren't spectacular, but they're not bad. But when we look at other players in the NCAA, like Casey Middlestat, for example, when we see similar numbers... Middles that put up better numbers, and so it is tough to make that overall comparison. But Brady Kachuk really showed how elite of talent he is at the World Juniors under 20. This is the same World Juniors that Philip Zadina shined in, that Andrei Svechnikov was at, uh, Rasmus Dahlin, Quinn Hughes, all these guys. Brady Kachuk, seven games played, three goals, six assists, nine points for Team USA. Also played a lot with uh, Ryan Paling. So there was some chemistry built between Paling one of the Montreal Canadiens' top prospects. And so rumor was possible that Brady Kachuk would go to Montreal. But instead, he goes to Ottawa, a team that could use the left winger. If you look at their left wing depth, really, Miguel Bodker is that number one left winger right now, coming in from the Sharks. Then you have Marion Gabrick, a veteran player, as well as some other guys who will be challenging for minutes. So Brady Kachuk really can fight in and take a roster spot this year. If we look at his numbers, last year, USDP was where he was at the year before Boston. 61 games played, 25 goals, 29 assists, 54 points, 129 penalty minutes. Really showing that Kachuk flair, showing that he's, first of all, bigger than his brother Matthew, but plays the same game that Keith and Matthew Kachuk have played for years. He also went to the World Juniors that year under 18. Seven games played, one goal, six assists, seven points. 
So when we talk about him going in front of Philip Zadina, who goes at six to Detroit, Zadina had 44 goals this year in the queue, whereas Brady Kachuk only had eight goals this year at Boston. So not as much of a goal scorer, but keep in mind, the Q is the most easy of leagues to score in, in the CHL. The NCAA often is considered to have better defensive schemes, better goaltenders, better coaching, and it's a better speed of play. It's it's faster speed of play. So it is tougher to score in the NCAA, certainly. Brady Kachuk did a decent job. But when we look at what he brings, first and foremost, he brings that Kachuk flair. Very physical, gets to those dirty areas. His father said he's a lunatic on the ice. But off the ice, amazing work ethic. Someone who's a great team player, great for the fans, great for the overall city. Ottawa needs to find someone who can really be this uh, new wave kind of franchise player for their system. Especially if Eric Carlson does leave Ottawa and goes to one of these rumored places, potentially Vegas or somewhere else. They need to find someone they can wrap their team around. Brady Kachuk is that guy. He's going to revolutionize that team, much like Matthew Kachuk came into Calgary, really vitalized that team. Of course, they had other players there as well, Johnny Goudreau doing a similar role. But these kind of players bring a flair that really helps the team build. And also, Brady Kachuk, very good hands. He can be the elite scorer or the grinder. And so really, he has top-level talent in everything that he does. He's a two-way force, a physical force, a leader, and a goal scorer. Philip Zadina is mainly and primarily a goal scorer. Does have decent two-way game, but playmaking is not part of his game. Brady Kachuk brings that. So in the complete sense of the game, in the complete package, Brady Kachuk brings it more than Philip Zadina. So interesting pick. I personally probably would have picked Philip Zadina ahead of Brady Kachuk because I think Ottawa could use that elite sniper. But that being said, both are very interesting picks. Both are very good picks for Ottawa. With Brady Kachuk going to Ottawa instead of Zadina, by the time he does hit that NHL, could be as fast as this year. He's going to slot in next to Matthew Shane if he comes this year. And Ottawa really needs a reason for Matthew Shane to stay. Being that 2019 UFA, they need to start winning and they need to show something that will keep Matthew Shane there. Because obviously he wanted to leave Colorado when they were a losing team. Many people think Matthew Shane will be out of Ottawa in a year. But if Brady Kachuk comes in, plays with that flair that his uh, father and brother did... It's something that's really going to keep Matthew Shane around. Brady Kachuk is a fast player as well, someone who can play at a high level. We know Matt, uh, Matt uh, Duchesne is one of the biggest speed demons in the NHL. It's a good fit. It's something that will keep him moving. And so I think overall it's something that's going to be great for the franchise. When we look at the stat projection long term, by the time Brady Kachuk comes to the NHL, very similar numbers to his brother. We're talking about 20 goals, possibly 25 goals. But then also 30 to 40 assists. So really a 55 to 60 point player. Going to be that first line left wing type player. And also 100 penalty minutes if not more. Possibly 150 is very much in the range. He's even more of a physical player. Even more of a lunatic than his brother. So we're really talking about a high level of penalty minutes. Now if we look at the 26th overall pick that Ottawa selects. Interesting pick. It's a pick that really was off the charts. Someone who yes has been a late riser since the combine. But someone that overall scouts did not have going as a first-round pick. And that is Jacob Bernard Docker. Bernard Docker is a defender coming from the AJHL. So an interesting league. It's not a league that we see a lot of high-level prospects going from. This year we saw a decent amount of players going from either the BCHL or the AJHL. But it's not leagues that usually are first and second round talent leagues. Jacob Bernard Docker comes out 18 years old. June 30th is the birthday, so very young. Six foot 187 from the Ostakos Oilers. 49 games played, 20 goals, 21 assists, 41 points, 34 penalty minutes. Very intriguing stat line when we think about it. He's a defender who's putting up as many goals as assists. Very interesting. He has a very good shot from the point, but he is also a playmaker. But to see a defender who puts up as many goals as they do assists is something that we don't see that often. Is it that his playmaking is not nearly as good as it should be? Or is it that his overall uh, offensive game in the goal scoring category is a very strong one? We also see he put up 34 penalty minutes. He does bring some physicality. But what really got him on the board was in the playoffs for the AJHL. 15 games played. Continued this intriguing stat line. 7 goals, 7 assists, 14 points. Also 8 penalty minutes. He comes to the World Juniors under 19 for Team Canada. Five games played, one goal, two assists, three points. If you look at his numbers last year in the AJHL, 54 games played, seven goals, 15 assists, 22 uh, points. So he really grew overall in the stat-wise, 
grew to those uh, seven goals to 20, 15 assists to 21. Overall, tremendous growth there. And in the playoffs that year, 12 games played, two goals, five assists, seven points. So he's become more comfortable in his goal scoring. Yes, he's continued to be that assist player, but he's becoming more comfortable in his goal scoring. But when we look at the overall stylistic play that someone like Bernard Docker brings, very strong transition game is what we're talking about. He plays old school hockey. This is someone who's going to be a physical player. He's going to be a grinder. He's going to play you along the boards. He's going to go for those loose pucks. But it's also someone who has a good shot from the point. Someone who can log huge minutes. Someone who can be a puck-moving defender, a minute-crunching defender. Someone who can play defense from any part of the ice. Very much this all-around, kind of of jack-of-all-trades type defender. The comparison I've seen on a few different uh, scouting reports on him is Jake Muzzin. And Muzzin is someone who has a good shot. Someone who can log huge minutes. Not overly physical, but can play strong defense and is a good puck mover. And we noticed that uh, Bernard Docker is going to the University of North Dakota in the fall. Somewhere where he can develop and be a strong pick. Ottawa's pick after Bernard Docker also is going to the University of North Dakota. So to have that chemistry already built in is very strong for Ottawa. And if you look at Ottawa's defensive depth, well, Shabbat obviously is there. Eric Carlson is there. Cody Ceci is there. Long term, how many others are there as well? They do have some decent ones in their prospect pool. I did a prospect pool analysis of the Ottawa Senators about a month or two ago. In the pinned comment, there'll be a suggested video of the day, and that is the video to look at all of the Ottawa Senators' prospects. So that's interesting to you. Check it out. But I do talk about some of their defensive prospects, guys in the AHL and prospects overall. But Bernard Docker is really going to come in as their best defensive prospect at their Shabbat. And Shabbat, we can't really even call a prospect anymore as he is an NHL player. Long term, Docker will be a top four defender who's really going to excel in the puck moving sense, but also the transition game. Something that Ottawa could really use to continue this fast uh, pace of game that they're doing around Matthew Shane last year and this year. And if they keep him long term, their game in Ottawa is really going to be coming around and built around speed. Docker really makes that make sense with this pick. If we look at the second round, 48th overall, Johnny Tyconic. Tyconic comes from the BCHL, so we see that Ottawa is targeting potentially non-traditional markets with their earlier picks. Pendicton V's is the pick for Tyconic. He's another defender, so Ottawa's really stacking the defenders with these two picks. 18 years old, a little bit uh, older than Bernard Docker. March 3rd is his birthday, 6'176", similar size. Pendicton V is the BCHL, an assistant captain. I did a scouting report video on Tyconic. Very interesting prospect. Has some of the best acceleration of the draft. Very interesting to talk about. 48 games played this year, 9 goals, 38 assists, 47 points, 34 penalty minutes. In the playoffs, very good numbers as well. 11 games played, 3 goals, 14 assists, 17 points. So really showed to be an amazing offensive talent in the playoffs. He went to the World Juniors under 18 for Team Canada, five games played, two assists, two penalty minutes, and a plus five. Last year for Pendicton, 48 games played, three goals, 20 assists, 23 points, 30 penalty minutes. And then in the playoffs, not nearly as good of a showing, 21 games played, only four assists, four points. He did go to the World, Jun uh, the World Hockey Championship under 17 that year, four games played, uh, six games played, four assists. Once again, this is someone who's going to the University of North Dakota in the fall. So to get that experience from two players who are coming from leagues that aren't considered the uh, most prominent of leagues or considered a lower tier than the CHL leagues, but to have these two prospects come in, go to the same NCAA program, it's a talented program at North Dakota, but also to have them work together, build that chemistry, it's going to be very good for them long term. Tyconic is someone who is an elite level power play quarterback. That's what he's always been since he was 15 or 16. His game has been built as an elite power play quarterback. He joins the rush very well. He's a very strong passer. We see that statistically this year with those 38 assists. He does have a decent shot, but he doesn't use it often enough. So we see nine goals this year. We, it's much less than uh, Bernard Docker having those 20 goals, but Tyconic arguably has the better shot. We just don't see him shooting it enough. And we also see that this is someone who... His play without the puck is fairly weak. His transition game is decent, not nearly as good as Bernard Docker's, but the defensive game without the puck is horrible. He's not in the right position, and 
uh, and he's not getting that correctly IQ-wise. Overall, the defensive game without the puck is very sloppy. And so it's iconic, very interesting prospect, very intriguing prospect, someone who offensively could be a top two pair offensive elite level power play quarterback. But if you look at the defensive side, he's not someone who's really going to get top four minutes. So it's a tough call where he's going to go with this, but to have him develop with Bernard Docker, who is someone who does have a better defensive game, it should be very strong for his development overall. Long term, we're talking about someone who can probably put up 15 goals, 20 to 25 assists, maybe a little bit less than that, but he should be a top four defender and a first line power play QB type defender if he can work out his defensive flaws. Fourth overall, so no picks in the third round, and this has been consistent with the first three picks of the draft. The, the, those the first three teams, Buffalo, uh, Carolina, and Montreal, all had uh, the majority of their picks in different rounds, didn't necessarily own their own picks in every single round, so there were rounds where they had no picks at all. Same story happens with Ottawa, no pick in the third round. They come into the fourth round, 95th overall, Johnny uh, Gruden, left winger, 18 years old, May 4th is the birthday, so fairly young, six foot 170, USDP programs where he's coming from. He did play with Jack Weiss this year. I did the scouting report on Jack Weiss. He went 69th overall to the Blackhawks, Weiss being a center, a two-way center. Gruden was really getting second line minutes for the USDP behind guys like Farabee, Jack Hughes, and Oliver Wallstrom. Also getting to play with decent defenders that went this year early in the draft. Matias Samuelson, Keandre Miller, and Bodie Wild. So Johnny Gruden was in a very good system. Arguably, he's the worst of all of those. But that's not to say he's a bad pick at all. In the USDP, 61 games played, 28 goals, 32 assists, 60 points, 46 penalty minutes. In the USHL uh, as well, 25 games played, 15 goals, 19 assists, 34 points, 20 penalty minutes, and a plus 28. So we see he's a positive force, he's an offensive force, but he's also a two-way force. At the World Juniors, he was the assistant captain under 18 for uh, United States. Seven games played, no goals, four assists. The interesting thing about Gruden is that he's a natural goal scorer. That has always been something about his game. And so we see in the USDP with those 28 goals, he's being highlighted as a goal scorer. And yet he comes to the World Juniors and puts up no goals. And so someone who really wants to have their draft stock rise and be seen as a goal scorer does not do anything in that category there. Now, Andrei Svechnikov didn't score any goals either in the World Juniors, but he highlighted this game through other ways and didn't have much ice time. Gruden, though, not as much ice time as other players, did not highlight his stuff enough, did not highlight that goal scoring enough, and that's why he did fall to 95th. But he possibly could have went a 60 to 80. So it is a decent pick to get at 95th. He's going to Miami University in Ohio in the fall. It's an organization, a college that did struggle last year, but they have had some NHL talent in the past, some prospects that have been drafted. If you look at Gruden's stylistic play, very strong acceleration, some of the best of the draft. The edge work is very strong. The transition game between speeds is one of the best we've seen in quite a while. This is someone who can get to a very high level of speed, but then quickly get to almost uh, dead stop speed going backwards. The transitions between the speeds are fantastic. Does it uh, within very quick moments. Can do it in very quick windows as well. He's very good at chipping pucks in in front of the net. This is someone who will play as a grinder in front of the net via force screening, but also chipping. Gets those rebounds. But he does have a very strong work ethic in his own zone. So he is a two-way player as well. He got to play behind Joel Farabee this year in the USDP. Farabee being one of the best two-way players of the entire draft in terms of uh, wingers. And Farabee was that captain of the USDP program. Johnny Gruden really got to learn a lot from him. This is someone who long-term Gruden projects to be a middle six workhorse left winger. So long-term, Gabrick will be off the books in a couple years. Johnny Gruden, someone who should step in most likely after three years of college hockey, will probably be a second or third line left winger, being a physical but also two-way force, as well as a goal scorer in front of the net. Interesting pick for Ottawa. It's a pick I really like, actually. I think it's a big steal of a pick, considering that he could have went easily 20 picks higher. It's a pick that is not being talked about enough. Johnny Gruden is someone who's not getting scouts' attention as much as he should. I think this is a very good pick for Ottawa. Ottawa comes back at 126th, selecting one of the most interesting players just in terms of his name alone, and then is Angus Cruikshank. 
Crookshank is someone who really hasn't been on scouts' attention at all. Someone who on some mocks went as high as 110, others was in the 200s. So this is someone who very much is a gamble of a pick. And it continues the story of Ottawa selecting players that probably shouldn't have gone as high as they did or should have went later than they did. A lot of interesting picks here. We see that the pick before this one, Ottawa gets someone who was falling. The pick before that, Tyconic, arguably, was a higher pick, as well as Bernard Docker and Kachuk. So a lot of picks here are reaches, and we see Crookshank could be another one. 5'11", 181, he's, he's uh, 18 years old. October 2nd's the birthday. Another BCHL player. So we see Ottawa is really targeting these uh, junior A levels. Langley Rivermen is the team, 42 games played, 22 goals, 23 assists, 45 points, 34 penalty minutes. In the playoffs, he really got his name going, 6 games played, 3 goals, 4 assists, 7 points. It got him a call to the World Juniors under 19 for Team Canada, 5 games played, 2 goals, 3 assists, 5 points, 2 penalty minutes. An amazing showing overall at the World Juniors there, going to the University of New Hampshire in the fall. If you look at his stats last year, we see... A uh, tremendous amount of growth, 31 games played, 9 goals, 12 assists, 21 points, growing 9 goals to 22, 12 assists to 23, great growth overall there. And we see that interesting pick, statistically it's a very good pick, someone who is a playmaker, is also a goal scorer, can be a physical force, but just overall plays a confident, safe game but also someone who can make highlight real type goals. So there's a lot to be interested about in Crookshank. But overall, I think it's a miss of a pick. And the reason I say this is, like I said earlier, Crookshank is a bit of uh, a reach. They could have taken him easily 20 picks later. That being said, Crookshank could have went 10 picks earlier. So a big window of where he could have went. But it's a failure, in my opinion, in that two picks later, the Montreal Canadiens picked a player who put up tremendously better points in a more talented league. I think in that sense, it's a major miss of a pick. Cole Fonston was picked by the Canadians two picks later. I talked about him in a video a couple of days ago in Montreal. I'll only mention him very briefly here. For the WHL, Prince Albert Raiders, 72 games played, 21 goals, 52 assists, 73 points, 6 penalty minutes. So he put up one less goal than uh, Crookshank in a better league. We're talking about the WHL versus a more junior A type league. This is just a better league overall, better competition tougher defensive patterns, everything about it is better. And then 52 assists. So Feinstein puts up so many more assists, 52 from 23, 73 points in uh, 72 games versus 45 and 42. So the point per game wise, very similar. The spread of points, we see Crookshank is more of a balanced player, whereas Feinstein is much better as a playmaker. But overall, Feinstein is someone who looks to project better long term. Now, potentially going to the University of New Hampshire will be a great experience for Crookshank. He'll be able to play at tougher competition. Long term could be better for him. But someone like Cole Fonson looks like to be a major steal going at 128. In my opinion, Ottawa should have selected him. I don't think Crookshank is a bad pick by any means. I think he'll be a decent pick. I think long term he'll be a third line player for Ottawa. But I think there was top six potential in Cole Fonson. And I think they missed out on that. In the sixth round, Ottawa comes in and takes a goaltender. And in my opinion, you want to take a goaltender every draft. They come up earlier than a lot of other teams, and they take a goaltender. We see the Sabres waited till the very end of the draft to take their goaltender. And this year, we see that Ottawa comes in and takes uh, Kevin Mandelis. 6'4", 176, very projectable size. August 22nd's the birthday, so extremely young for this draft. One of the youngest in this draft. QMJHL, Cape Breton, Streaming Eagles, same team as Pierre-Luc Dubois came from a few years ago. Kevin Mandelis, 3.46, 0. .884. Interesting stats. We know the Q is the highest scoring league. You would have liked to see better stats than that. Uh, you'd like to see something like 3.02 uh, a goals against average. And then the 8, 0. .884 isn't actually that bad. That's decent numbers, but really the goals against needs to be lower. In the playoffs, five games played. 3.91 goals against the average, 0.875 uh, save percentage. So the numbers really aren't that impressive there. So overall, someone going at 157 with these numbers has not impressed me so far. But then we see last year for uh, Caper and 27 games played, 3.47 goals against the average, 0.890. So the stats are even better the year before. So if anything, he got worse this year. 
Yes, he did play more games, but did get worse. But then we see in the playoffs last year, three games played, 4.84, 0.876. So potentially he's getting better this year. But overall, these are stats that I would not want someone to be taking early six rounds. But when it really comes full circle is the World Hockey Championship under 17. Three games played, 2.04, 0.931. One of the best goaltenders at the World Hockey Championships that year. Tremendous showing. He was also the 13th overall selection in the 2016 QMJHL entry draft. The first goalie in that draft was third overall, Olivier Rodriguez. Arguably the best goaltender in this draft. Went second uh, for all goaltenders in the 2018 NHL entry draft. So there's a lot to like about Kevin Mandelis. He has the great size. This is someone who's very mobile. Has a very strong glove hands. But we're not seeing it statistically coming out. Internationally, that one uh, that one section, World Hockey Championships, amazing showing. And that's why he is being drafted as high as he is. Next year, he should get more games in Cape Breton. He'll be an older player. Keep in mind, he's only 17. We are talking about someone who's much younger than many other goaltenders this draft. Younger than Jakob Skarg. So certainly there's a lot to be liked about his game in terms of overall potential and development, but we just haven't seen it yet. Now, if we look at the organizational setup of Ottawa in terms of goaltenders, well, Craig Anderson and Mike Condon are 2020 UFAs. So you do want to add someone to that group. They have Philip Gustafson, 6'2", 183, 55th overall pick by the Penguins in 2016, was brought to Ottawa just by the deadline last year. Very strong goaltending prospect. His glove hand is fantastic. Good mobility, good size overall, but the glove hand is fantastic. The Penguins uh, believe that they could spare him, knowing that they do have, obviously, Matt Murray, also Kristen Jari, uh, Tristan Jari, and some others. Gustafson came to the Senators organization. He put up amazing numbers this year in the SHL level, fantastic numbers. Came to the AHL, seven games played for the Belleville Senators, 3.01.912. So not horrible numbers. You'd like to see the goals against lower. But overall, not horrible. World Juniors under 20 for Sweden. Amazing numbers this year. Six games played, 1.81, 0.924. So long-term, Gustafsson is the starter for Ottawa. This really isn't a goaltending draft overall. The 2017 draft was very much a goaltending draft. This year, really, there's only a few guys that could be considered starting-level goaltenders. But long-term, Mandalese could be an AHL starter to an NHL backup, depending how he develops, possibly NHL backup, but he's definitely a good pick for Ottawa. You do need to add that goaltender, and he's the best one on the board. Seventh round, 188th, Ottawa comes up and takes uh, Jacob Novak, left winger or center. He is 19 years old, so he's an overager, 6'3", 201, so he has great size, and he's coming from the NHL, so Ottawa is taking a lot of players from leagues that aren't considered to be Tier 1 leagues for prospects. Janesville Jets assistant captain, 56 games played, 32 goals, 41 assists, 73 points. Amazing numbers. We see he's a strong goal scorer, but a great playmaker. But what really makes the game for him is 131 penalty minutes in a plus 41. A very much a physical threat, but also a two-way force. Everything he does was amazing this year for the NAHL. He was the forward of the year. He was the MVP of the year. He had the most goals, the most points, and the best plus minus of the league. So everything he did, he was the best player that the NAHL had available. To select him at 188th, though it's a league that we don't see a lot of prospects coming from, it's worth taking him. Now, we see that in the playoffs, eight games played, four goals, six assists, ten points. Very strong. He's going to Bentley University in the fall. And if you look at his numbers last year, 52 games played, 11 goals, 17 assists, 28 points. So he really grew his game overall. Somebody's becoming more comfortable in his game. He looks to be a long-term project. They interviewed him after the draft, and he said he will probably do four years in the NCAA. But if Ottawa likes what they see he would be open to coming out earlier. So really, at minimum, he's going to be at least a three-year player in the NCAA. So it's a long-term investment. But being able to play either the left wing or the center, it gives Otto a lot more options. And you might as well take him at 188th. I think it's a good pick. The last pick of Ottawa's draft is at 194th. And this pick, in my opinion, I think is terrible. I think this is one of the worst picks Ottawa, Ottawa could have made. I think it's their worst pick of the draft. Now, I'm not saying he's a horrible talent. But in terms of who was available, they made it a bad pick, in my opinion. Luke Lunnett is the pick. Right winger, 17 years old, July 26. So a young player. 
six foot one eighty three. Penticton V's is where he's going to this fall. The season after that, he'll be going to the University of Minnesota Duluth for the NCAA. So this is someone who we we don't even see BCHL hockey out of him. We'll see it next year. We don't see NCAA hockey. We'll see it in two years. What we see is he's from the high school hockey league in Minnesota, which isn't horrible. We see the Casey Mills that came from that last year. USHS Minnesota coming from Minnetonka High. He's the captain. 24 games played, 12 goals, 18 assists, 30 points, 51 penalty minutes. In the playoffs, three games played, two goals, two penalty minutes. Statistically, he's not the greatest showing that we've seen. Decent points overall, but I think it's a huge miss of a pick. And I say that because if Ottawa's going to go off the board and take someone who's yet another reach in this draft, they want to take a player who makes sense. They're taking someone from the United States uh, high school leagues in Minnesota, and so, if we notice, Luke Lonick goes at 194. At 200, Tampa selects Mr. Minnesota Hockey. Every single year, Minnesota picks their best high school hockey player, gives him that title. We see Nick Letty had it uh, when he was in high school. Casey Middlestad had it to that best senior graduating. Luke Lennett was not that. Samuel Walker was that. And so, if we're going to make a risk of a pick and take that reach, why would you select someone who put up worse numbers in the exact same league as someone who was considered the best player in that league. Samuel Walker for Adina High, he's, he was the captain, 25 games played, so one more game than Luke Lonnett. Like I said, Lonnett had 30 points in 24 games. Well, Samuel Walker had 28 goals, so 28 goals versus Lonnett's 12. Also, Walker had 30 assists versus Lonnett's 18, and then 58 points versus Lonnett's 30. He also had 12 penalty minutes. In the playoffs, three games played, four goals, six assists, ten points, versus Lonnett's three games played, only two goals. And uh, Lonnett, whereas he's going to Penticton in the fall, then NCAA the year after for Minnesota Duluth, we see that Samuel Walker is going right to the University of Michigan, uh, right to the University of Minnesota this fall. So there's absolutely no reason why Samuel Walker should not have been picked first. Better, st uh, better statistic player in every facet of the game, better goal scorer, better leader, better assist maker. There's nothing he does that makes any reason why he should go later except one thing. And that reason is the fact that Lana is six foot 183, Walker is 5'9", 150. So the size makes him undersized significantly, being 5'9", as someone who is playing as a winger or a center, and then only being 150, he doesn't have that weight or that strength. So long term, he really needs to beef up. But at uh, as somewhere late in this draft, at 194, we're selecting reaches either way. 194 is somewhere where really NHL players, we're not going to be seeing too many of them. We'll be seeing some, but really long term, only a few. And so you want to select best player available. In their opinion, it was Lonnet. But if we see statistically, there's absolutely no reason why they shouldn't have selected Samuel Walker. And so in my opinion, this was the biggest miss of the draft for Ottawa. So thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, comment below your thoughts. Of course, like the video and subscribe for more content if you liked it. And what are your thoughts on Ottawa's draft? Who do you think was their best pick? Do you think their last pick was a major miss? Do you think their pick in the middle that I mentioned was a miss? How do you think it went for them? I think overall, Ottawa had a very good draft, selecting Brady Kachuk, also adding two strong defenders who can build that chemistry together at North Dakota. But some of their middle round picks really make me wondering why were they taking these reaches when there were other picks on the board. But overall, a good draft for Ottawa. I think they made a very good decision overall. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the comment section and in the next video.